Welcome to Boca Raton, Florida, home of the Owls. They're rolling. They've won 19 straight. Western Kentucky is in South Florida looking for the upset. Welcome inside Baldwin Arena, expecting another sellout as number 21, Florida Atlantic, riding a 19-game winning streak, plays host to Western Kentucky. Hello to everyone, alongside Tim Scarborough, I'm Ari Wolf, and Tim, this FAU team is doing a little bit different than other teams we've seen. This team is playing together. There's a level of cohesiveness, but the thing that seems to define them is how unselfish they are. They are unselfish. The saying is sharing is caring. Well, these guys care a whole lot about each other at both ends of the floor. They have been terrific sharing the basketball. They get after it at the defensive end. And as a result, teams are having trouble scoring on them. But secondly, they get their own offense going. A pick six right there for a dunk. And when you see that bench stand up, you know FAU is rolling. And they do that very well inside this building. Their top scorer comes off the bench, and this guy's lethal, John L. Davis. How about that leading scorer coming off the bench, adding pop from downtown. He's a terrific defender as well. Just a guy that plays with a ton of energy, and he feeds off of this crowd. And I tell you what, Ari, if he gets it going from downtown, it could be a long night for Rick Stansberry and company. Well, this team is built different. We mentioned the 19 consecutive wins. They lead America. 38 plus points a game off the bench and against Middle Tennessee the other night 52 bench points 12 steals and they shot it at 54 percent all right Western Kentucky scar if they're going to have a chance upset Jamari Sharp is their anchor defensively well Jamari Sharp all he does is lead the country and block shots he's got 84 of them but don't sleep on them at the offensive end they get them in ball screen pick and roll offense just throw it up there baby he's going to go get it but the thing I love about him is not only does he block shots, he changes shots, and he discourages shots. Even when he's down on the floor, you're always looking for number 33. The big man caused a lot of problems. He leads America more than four blocks per game. Last two games helping out offensively on the glass. And boy, did he play well against FIU the last time. 50 points, didn't miss a shot, and had seven blocks. They call it winning in paradise. FAU's got it rolling when we come back. The opening tip, the Hilltoppers and the Owls on stadium. Welcome back. Let's get right to the starting lineup. Hilltoppers and the Owls about to tip off for Florida Atlantic. In the second half, Thursday night, Nick Boyd was the guy. 13 points. Vlad Golden is a consistent center. He's a true big. For Western Kentucky, Davion McKnight is their star. He does so many things well. He's been Mr. Consistent, but he's going to need other guys to step up if they're going to come up with the upset. Yeah, and it's unfortunately they don't have Luke Frampton, one of the top three-point shooters in the country, 46% on the year. As a freshman, he had 100 threes at Davidson a few years ago. That's a shame. Torn ACL. He'll top inside. Hamilton leads it short. Here come the Owls. Greeley handling the point at the moment. Here's Nick Boyd. They consider him a leader of the team. He's just a redshirt freshman. Withers boots three way off. Golden the rebound. He does a lot. Oh. And Sharp blocks his first <laughs> shot. I tell you what, Golden better learn how to pump fake. I know he's used to just shooting over people. He will not be able to shoot over Jamarion Sharp. Oh, right the way. The Hilltoppers coming off a disappointing game Thursday night. They lose at FIU. It was a game, frankly, they really weren't even in the game in the second half. They ended up losing 78-69. Rick Stansbury, the head coach, he has had a storied career. He's been the head coach for Western Kentucky since 2016. Gaffney with it. Greenlee wide open triple. Count yes. Obviously a breakdown in communication, and that is costly in this arena. Emmanuel Icon with the basketball. He can score it. 
Averages 10 points per game, pull up from 16, no. Emmanuel Acott, number 13, transfer from out in the Mountain West, Boise State. He's an all-conference player out there. It's a really good pickup off, off season. This Western Kentucky team is extremely talented. They've had some issues putting things together so far. High expectations for the Hilltoppers coming into this season. Many people thought they'd finish perhaps even at the top of the conference. They were projected number two. Currently in 10th place. Yeah, who would have thought that out of 11 Conference USA teams? Jordan Rawls against the shot clock. He rattles home the three as the clock's winding down. That, for the moment, silences the crowd. Rawls is an interesting story. Started his career at Western, transferred out to Georgia State, and now he's back. And now he's in the starting lineup with the injury to Frampton. Greenlee's probing. Good defense. Boyd with it, 10 on the shot clock. They lift Golden to get Sharp out of that paint, but he stays there. Greatly two of three from beyond the arc. And that is a good feeling if you're an Owls fan. The other night, Thursday, they started off, missed their first eight shots, didn't have a point. First media timeout, zero points. Yeah. For and still ended up winning the game comfortably and shooting over 50%. They get it going and they just overwhelm you throughout the course of the game. Here come the Owls. Gaffney steps into a triple, why not? This team makes nearly 10 threes a game, but it's interesting because I talked to Dusty May and I feel like this is not really a three-point shooting team. They don't rely on it. They can get to the rim, but they're awfully good at around, uh, around the arc as well. And here's another telling thing. They're making three more threes per game than their opponents. Yes, they win that battle nightly, and you can see why. They run to the three-point line in transition. They can all handle the ball, and they distribute. Dusty May has done a magnificent job with this group. He's had a winning record every season he's been here. There's a lot of talk about this team. What happened? Chemistry is a beautiful thing, and these guys seem to love playing for each other. They really do, and it's evident by the fact that the two of the top three scorers come off the bench. They used to be starters. Hamilton knocks down the three. Here he's Hamilton. He shoots it well from out there, 40%. It's his 31st made three of the season. Hamilton, one of the better drivers of the basketball as well, at six foot eight. Tough to guard. Davis already into the game. He plays starters minutes, even though he comes off the bench. Timeout. FAU. FAU wants and gets a timeout. A little less than four minutes gone by. The Owls shooting it beautifully from beyond the arc. They have a three-point lead. We're coming right back to Boca Raton. Let's stay connected at all times, frame by frame for 40 minutes, guys. It's a Saturday afternoon game, quick turn. It's going to come down to who cares the most. Yes, sir. It's going to come down to who really, really wants to win and who cares the most. And we know we care more than anyone. Often a team reflects its leader. And when the coach sounds like that, and he's such an unselfish coach, giving his staff so much responsibility, you can see why his team is so unselfish. Yeah, I mean, you know, we talked about this with him before the game, right? When he said, you know, last year we lost a lot of close games and we had two or three things that we did that cost us those games. Coming out of the summer, we focused on two or three of those things and emphasized it every single day. Wouldn't tell us what those were, but he said the fact that we focus on them and we've approved, improved those things, it has paid dividends. Giancarlo Rosado will head to the free throw line. Sophomore from West Palm Beach, Florida. Gives him good production off the bench, 5.6 points. Also gives him more than four rebounds per game. And for big guys, shoots the ball well from the free throw line. They get a lot of production out of that five with him coming off the bench. Vlad Golden's having a solid year starting. Well, good to see Coach Stansbury back. He missed a bunch of games. Good to see him back on the sideline. Seven seasons now at Western Kentucky. Look at that record. And it's a program that's had a lot of success. Great tradition 
for decades. Yes. I they won for two a, for Rosano. It's been, it's been about a decade since they've been to the NCAA tournament. Ray Harper, the current Jacksonville State coach, the last coach to take this team to the big dance. Here we go. Bob for Sharp. Oh, 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 oh. At 7 5, he's real close to the rim without jumping. And, and he's very athletic, yes. too. So, you know, he's a different than most 7 foot 5 guys. They're a little clumsy or big and, and, and cumbersome. He runs just like a 6 9 guy. Gaffney, deep triple off the back iron. Sharp battles for the rebound. It's going to be Owls basketball on the baseline. And we talked about ball screen offense, and you better watch your head. But right here, a simple back screen, and Gio gets caught on the back end of it. And he pays the, pays the price. Three from the corner. Elijah Martin, no good. But Rosado there for the putback. He's having an immediate impact off the bench. This is a team you don't see this very often. They play 11 guys legitimate minutes. And they believe in each other. That's what we talked about in the open, Ari. They, they, it's truly a group that is unselfish, and that's really hard to create that environment. I, you got to give a lot of credit to Dusty. But well, let's bring up the fact he doesn't too, even control the substitutions. He trusts his staff that much. So it seems they've created a thing where let's all believe in each other, trust each other, and it's really paying off. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. He told us that before the game that yeah. he, he doesn't make substitutions in game. He, he, his coaching staff does that. Now, he did say he has some influence. He said in, he can trump them, right? Yeah, he can just he, say, yeah, no, that's yeah. not happening. Or he could say, um, get him off the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's a lot of I never heard that before where nah. the head coach lets the assistants decide when players come in and out of the game. And if they did do it, they certainly wouldn't tell guys like us, right? <laughs> right? Because we're going to tell America. Hamilton, oh, wow. offensive foul. He doesn't like the call. Yeah, he thinks Jalen Gaffney flopped. He's got two already, and I think he's going to have to take a seat. Tyrone Marshall's going to come into the game. And, you know, I think that's a pretty good call, though, because he led with that off left hand, and he lowers his butt into him. A little acting job, too. How about 50-50? <laughs> Aren't most of those calls down there 50-50? Yeah, agree. Uh, oh, that should be goaltending because he smacked the backboard so hard that ball came out. He knows Sharp up high for the rebound. You're right, Sharp moves well for a guy seven feet five inches tall. He does. He's a good rebounder and a good shot blocker. Well, that's oh, nice. Shot. Davion McKnight. Speaking of good basketball players, this kid is exceptional. Hadn't talked a lot about him, but he's averaging 20.5 and five assists in the last 13 games, carrying the load for them offensively. Doesn't shoot a lot of threes, but his pull-up game on point as you see there and because he's such a good pull-up shooter the defenders feel the need to get up on him at that time a little too close for comfort how about all the things he does for him leads him in points free throw attempts free throw makes assists steals minutes and number three and rebound that's a lot sweet touch on the free throw pretty solid defender as well on ball particularly and if you notice, if you look over at the, the bench, we introduced um, uh, Stansberry, Rick Stansberry, but he's sitting on a on a, a bench or a stool, I guess, and Phil Cunningham, his associate head coach, is doing all the walking around and, and, and directing traffic. So you kind of have two head coaches right now. Of course, we mentioned Stansberry missed eight games, and Phil Cunningham filled in while he was out. Davis. Oh, I mean, that's golden. It looked like it hit the backboard first. Again, they are letting Jamarion Sharp play at that end right now. They double team McKnight. He's got in trouble. And the Owls come away with it. Michael Forrest, the three. Too strong. Loose ball. Hilltoppers come away with it. Michael Forrest, a fifth year guy. Used to be a starter, now coming off the bench. Dante Allen, three no. 
Kentucky transfer Dante Allen coming off the bench. Let's see if this is the backboard first. It definitely did. Because when you see the one, two, that's when you know. It's bounce, 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 bounce. That's an easy one for me to see. But our guys at Stripes let that one go. We're looking for Boyd off the screen. They turn it over. McKnight with it. Icott picks up the dribble. John misses the three. Yeah. McKnight's spin move leaves it short. Boy, they're letting him play today. They really are. Icott kicks a couple times to mount. It's a foul on Tyrone Marshall. I'll, I give, I'll give credit to the Owls with their scrambling and recovering, but Western Kentucky looks a little discombobulated on offense. There wasn't a lot of flow to that, as you see Coach Phil Cunningham, associate head coach, directed traffic there, and Coach Stansbury, the head coach, Of course, Phil has been a head coach at the Division I level, most recently at Troy University. Well, without Sharp in the game, you think maybe this is the time if you're going to try to get into the paint. That's going to be a turnover right there on Martin. Because when Sharp's back there, every time a guy drives, I think this probably isn't going to go well. Yeah, but you know, Western is actually the tallest team in the country by average, according to Ken Palm. So they have seven players who are six foot seven or taller. So it's not like they get small when he, I mean, obviously they get small because like you can't get any bigger than 7 five at in the country. Another nice drive by Jordan Rawls. Western Kentucky oh. with the lead, and it's another turnover, some momentum. They swung in favor of the Hilltoppers. Three turnovers now for the Owls. Just no flow at the offensive event. Again, that's, in my opinion, an unforced turnover. Malu Jang just lost that one. All right, the Owls have been quiet offensively for the last couple of minutes. A little careless with the basketball. And no points over the last two minutes and 50 seconds. Good defense. Oh, what a block. Oh, jump ball. Oh, that jump ball nice. pass into the Owls. Boy, the, the defense around the rim for Western Kentucky. <laughs> yeah. Terrific. I'll say a little bit of resistance. You get to the rim, you got to throw a pump fake or go strong because they are protecting that rim with the best of them. You're right, Sharp comes out of the game. They still got guys up there blocking shots. And it's interesting what Dusty May said in the locker room. Great sound, by the way, by our crew. But he, he said, listen, this game is going to be won by who wants it more. And we know we want it more. I love that. Because you feel like they really believe that they, that they want it more than the other team. We win 19 straight. Belief becomes a real thing. You expect to win instead of worrying about ways we might lose. Pick fifth in Conference USA preseason. How about that? Well, right. You look at both these programs. They're great examples that it's hard to prognosticate at the beginning <laughs> of the year. West Kentucky picks second. They're in tenth. FAU picks fifth. And right now, they're runaway first place. They're in the three games in the loss call. But FAU struggling shooting the ball just 25% so far. Three for 12. Christian Lander picks up the foul, his second. He'll take a seat. McKnight back in the game. This is just blasting through a screen. I mean, he's saying, look, you're in my way. 
but you can't do that. A no, no. Easy for call for the officials there. Here's a look at the top six in Port Atlantic. Undefeated in conference play, a perfect 10-0. 20 and 1 overall, including a 19 game winning streak. North Texas. North Texas is a good team. The question is, will this be a two bid league? We're going to talk a lot more about that at the half. Yeah, and it's been a two team race, and Rice has been sort of a surprise as well. Had them versus Western Kentucky in Bowling Green. Really good team. Great shooters, and they know how to close down the stretch. Martin. Oh! Wind it up and send it down. First two-point field goal for FAU. Cubs, we've almost played eight minutes. That's one way to not get your shot blocked at the rim. McKnight too strong this time, and this will be Owls basketball. Elijah Martin, he's a guy who was a starter. Got hurt earlier in the year, and then they got hot with him coming off the bench, and he throws it down with authority. We've got a good one in Boca Raton as the Owls lead by one. Welcome back to Baldwin Arena. The Owls lead the Hilltoppers 14-13. NBA fans, stadium has you covered. Join Cameron Smith, Sham Sharania, and Pat Garrity on Inside the Association Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Get all the inside information happening around the NBA only on Inside the Association, presented by AT&T 5G, fast, reliable, and secure. All right, Scar, played a little over eight minutes, and Western Kentucky has come in. They've been outstanding defensively. Well, you know they can guard people. They just have trouble closing games. You look at the longest active streaks in the country, Charleston, First year coach Pat Kelsey, former Winthrop coach, and then Eastern Washington at just 11 and Colgate at nine. Notice you don't see any power fives anywhere close to even an eight game win streak in the country. That tells you the parity and the fact that this time of year, anybody can beat anybody, particularly in this 2022-23 season. Yeah, especially on the road, it's really tough in conference play. Yeah, and that's have where a long the, winning streak these days. As Western get, deploys a 2-3 zone now, and Sharp is back in, and they're trying to protect guys that are in foul trouble. You got Hamilton over there with two. He's on the bench. That is a deep three, no good. One and done for the Owls. Icon. Now it's Rawls. My God, 60-foot baseline jumper short. Oh, well, they're looking to run. Boy, Jones had leaked out, but they didn't see him. The ball does not stick, Ari. That three, no good. Golden is over the back. No call, though. The ball is out of bounds over to Western Kentucky. We were joking around that for Golden, he's 7-1. He doesn't look up at guys very often, but that's his assignment today against Jamari and Sharp. Sharp is 7-5. FAU struggle in scoring the basketball. One for their last nine attempts. Sharp in the paint. Golden might have affected that one a little yeah, bit. Good resistance, because Sharp was just going to drop that one in. And Martin loses the handle. It will remain uh, Owls basketball. We haven't heard much from John L. Davis yet. When he came off the bench, which is his normal routine now, the other night he gave them instant offense. But he has not been able to do so so far this afternoon. But it's different guys every night. And that's what makes this team so dangerous. Ball into the backcourt. Davis will retrieve it. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Davis the three, no. Sharp the rebound above the rim. Big Knight happy to go one on one. This is badly golden the rebound. They are funneling McKnight to his right as a left-hander. 
and then making them take that fall away is this defense waiting on the other side of them. Boyd can't hit Sharp another rebound. Sharp eats glass. Wow. Wow. Seven rebounds a game. I believe he's going to have more than that in the first half. The lob for Sharp is not a good pass. Golden comes away with it. It really wasn't there. And then you add the 7 1 Golden. It really is not. It's really not there. Tough shot, Martin. No. And Golden's over the back. So Golden picks up the foul, his second. And four guys are coming in for the Owls. So Golden to the bench with two fouls. Davis sits down with zero points. 0 for 2 from the field. Play seven minutes. Neither team can score it right now. FEU one for their last 11, West Kentucky one for their last eight. Yeah, give credit to the defense of both teams. But uh, I do feel like West is a little bit more smooth when they got their starters back on the floor. Rawls the drive, he'll head to the free throw line to shoot two. Jordan Rawls, senior from Chattanooga, Tennessee. 72% free throw shooter on the season, averages a little over seven points per game. Knocked down a couple shots already. He's actually leading them in scoring with five points. Give West Kentucky credit. They've come in here, they play with some toughness. And you hear the crowd right now, but for the most part, they've taken the crowd out of the game. This place was buzzing when this game tipped off. It really was. And who is not going to be excited about a 20 and 1 basketball team? I mean, this is like the place to be seen these days. So Rawls gives. West Kentucky a one-point lead. FAU really just struggling to get points. 2-3 zone again. That was effective for the first couple times they've done it. It keeps Sharp near the basket as well. Greenlee, no on the three. Nice and here come the Hilltop. A rare transition opportunity. And Wallace gets blocked, retrieves it. Oh. Hamilton the drive, no. Gonna remain Hilltoppers basketball. Frenetic pace at times in this game. Yeah, and, and the defenses are both trying to speed you up to make you take bad shots and make poor decisions. McKnight, tough shot, no. Sharp had it, lost it, fight for it. Boy, he is battling. Oh, man. Owls. Another turnover. Four, four turnovers for them now. Western's got seven turnovers. All right, take that back. Western's got six. Both defenses seem to have the offense just kind of running around almost like a little on edge out there. Yeah, and, and this is the type of game we start thinking about. And of course, Dusty May doesn't want to think about think like this, but you don't have a big margin of error when it comes to losing games in Conference USA if you want to talk about your at-large bid potential. And Conference USA has not had an at-large bid since 2013. <laughs> Witherspoon's three is good. Brandon Witherspoon, they needed that three. And what Western has done is they've relegated the Owls to the perimeter because of the resistance at the basket. It's not like they haven't tried to get there, but Western does such a great job of defending those twos. But thankfully for Dusty May, his guys are knocking down threes. Icott gets bumped, shot no good. Nice rebound in traffic right there by Weatherspoon. Rosado against Sharp, and that gets blocked. You gotta throw a pump back. You have to. If you just turn around and shoot it at Jamarion Sharp, he will block it. Icon size advantage goes to work, leaves it short. Gaffney the rebound. And Gaffney. 
gets fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. We are going to step away. Lots of defense. FAU struggling to get points. They needed it. And it's Brandon Weatherspoon knocking down the triple to give the Owls a two-point lead. Welcome back. Owls have a two-point lead. Seven minutes to go, first half. A group of former NFL stars and executives, including former Bucks GM Mark Dominic, linebackers LeVar Arrington and Lorenzo Alexander, get you ready for all the big games and NFL news on Inside the League. Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, only on Stadium Welcome to the Game. They're going to have lots to talk about. Two Super Bowl teams, conference championship games tomorrow. Before you make any predictions, let's acknowledge we're two Philly guys. <laughs> so we know we're both taking the Eagles tomorrow, but who do you like in the AFC? And we wear Philadelphia on our sleeve. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, that AFC game is going to be terrific. Two of the best quarterbacks, Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes. And Burrow's beaten Mahomes three times. Personally, I don't think he's going to beat him a fourth time. Yeah, I think this whole calling it Burrowhead is going to not oh. go well for them. I think you've just, you've just yeah, shaken the smart. bear. Yeah, why well, go there? That's not smart. And, and of course, Mahomes has that high ankle sprain, but I think he'll play through it. He'll be fine. Kathy hits the first free throw. The last field goal for Western Kentucky came six minutes ago. If you like offensive basketball, you may have come to the wrong game today. <laughs> but hey, the defense has been great. Well, we'll see. Both these teams have a lot of talent on the floor. They can get it going, particularly the Owls with their 19-game win streak on the line. But that kind of goes back to what I was saying. You know, there's no margin of error, unfortunately, in Conference USA, which is perceived as a one-bid league. This seems like the year that they might get two, is assuming the Owls don't win the Conference USA tournament in Fritzko. That's a beautiful move. Jordan Rawls, step-back jumper. Right back in some. Weatherspoon now has hit two triples. Shoots it at 32% from beyond the arc. Juco transfer. From the Holmes community. The Owls are five guys connected, man. They're, their defense. Right now, Rawls. Going one on one, it's working. That's back to back basket. Yeah, for Jordan Rawls. There's no defense for the pull up jumper, but if you drive, that is tough sledding right now at the Western Kentucky end. And Jordan Rawls breaks the drought. They need more of that. Gaffey's three, no. Witherspoon, good offensive rebound. Boy. Greenlee, good pass. Witherspoon, three in a row. Brandon Weatherspoon, nine points all from distance. And we talked about the cohesiveness and unselfishness. That was deliberate penetration to make sure Weatherspoon was the guy that got a good look on the other side. McKnight, yes, smooth stroke. Davion McKnight, preseason first team all conference USA. And McKnight and Rawls are both capable of creating shots. But you can't win the game with your guards having to create a shot. You got to get something within the flow of your offense. The 2-3 being deployed once again by Western Kentucky. I thought Weatherspoon was going to have a heat check for sure. <laughs> nice time. Lorient, yes. Brendan Lorient gets two. Freshman. Doesn't score a lot, averages just over a point per game, but with Golden with two fouls, getting some minutes here in the first half. McKnight in traffic, yes, high off the window. I asked Dusty May before the game about Davion McKnight, how do you keep him out of the paint? I said, I haven't seen anybody be able to do it. He said, yeah, I don't know if we will be either. That's an offensive foul on Brian Greenlee. That's two on Greenlee. And this is the way Western's going to have to beat a team like this that is playing well at home, 12-0, undefeated, 
We talked about the national streak. Big crowd. You got to make the game ugly, and they're pretty good at that. Defensively, they can muck it up, and then at times they struggle offensively. You got the ugly recipe right here. And Sharp back on the floor. When you got him in there, he's a defensive anchor unlike any player in America. Leads the country in block shots. McKnight, tough shot, no. Elijah Martin, the rebound. Owls want to push it. Boy, guys really move without the basketball in this team. You find shooters all over the place. We're going to take a timeout here. The Owls with the three-point lead. It's been a good one here in Boca Raton. Welcome back to FAU Arena. They're up tw by three, 26-23. But this is how you uh, try to attack a 2-3 zone. You see right here, you don't really see it set, but those are your five defenders. Because the ball went down into the corner, the defense is flattened out. So now, when you penetrate, now freeze it there if you can. You see the head fake, and then you dribble into this gap, and then you kick. Now, go ahead and let it run. Now you got a Rawls trying to recover, and then you just pump fake and drive again, freeze it. You draw the defense, and before you know it, now you got this pass diagonal, and you have a sniper on the other side able to knock it down from downtown. When you want to attack a zone, you have to get into those gaps, and the gaps are right at the elbow and then the baseline. You get those guys moving, you want two guys to play you, and then you look for the diagonal skip. They did a great job that time. Boyd, the triple short. Davis. That's a terrific bucket there by Rosado with Sharp standing right there. <laughs> it was risky. He, he got it up real quick. Yeah, he had to be quick with it. Five-point lead for the Owls. Rawls has been effective. Floater, yes. Jordan Rawls continues a terrific first half. And that was the best possession by far in the last several possessions for Western Kentucky. Good dribble penetration. They got all the way to the rim, and as a result, Rawls catches it in. Both teams starting to heat up a little bit. Still good loose ball battle for it. There was an the example. Kentucky ball. There was an example, Ari, of a shot that was changed. That wasn't a block shot, but you know. Sharp is around, so you have to throw up some something that you normally aren't used to throwing. And that's just a tough shot to make. So we, we count the block shots. I wish they'd have a stat of shots that he changes and shots that he downright discourages because yeah. of his presence. Shots not taken to me is yeah. a stat we, we don't acknowledge enough. McKnight pulls up. Boy, oh. he has a soft touch. He's guards right now. Taking over. Rawls. Number two, number 20, McKnight getting it done in red. Rawls has got 13, McKnight's got nine. So they've got 22 of their 27 points. Martin the three, no. Sharp another rebound. And they've had to create. I, mean, I don't know if you can play 40 minutes of your guards just creating shots, but they've done a solid job here in the first half. And Sharp misses that three. Four is the rebound. Gaffney's probing, oh, loses the handle, and Sharp comes up with it. It's going to be a foul on the Owls. I think they're going to get Gaffney. Foul is on Jalen Gaffney, hey, UConn oh, transfer. Oh, Sixteen fouls now on the Owls. Gaffney will go to the bench. Boyd comes back in the game. It's kind of funny that we've been talking so much about all the things Western Kentucky's doing right, but still the Owls have a one-point lead. <laughs> You're right. The Owls have made it tough to get into that paint. They do a great job of playing five guys helping each other. Well, how about the pass from Sharp falling out of bounds? Well done, big fella. 
He's got pretty good floor awareness. He does. Uh -huh. I feel like a lot of times when you see a guy at that size, he's totally one-dimensional. Just blocking shots. It's, 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 this guy's an athlete at 7'5". He really is. He rebounds, he blocks shots. And that's tough to do because when you're a shot blocker, you tend to go after everything and you're out of position to rebound. Allen makes the first one. Dante Allen, 73% on the season from the line. Averages six points per game. Leaves that one short for us, the rebound. Donald Davis, their leading scorer for the Owls, still zero points. He's got the basketball. He misses that one. We talked, their team doesn't hunt shots. That looked like there, he was looking to get a shot up. Davis in traffic, he lost the handle. It will remain FAU basketball. Yeah, and Forrest, Michael Forrest, off the bench, guy that kind of ignites them. He's 0 for 1 from the field. He's only played six minutes. All right, a minute to go in the first half. One, seems like it's been a one possession game most of the half. The lob for Sharp and the finish. That's how you flush it right there. Great pass as well by Rawls. Boyd, the quick trigger, and he knocks down the three. Nick Boyd, his first points of the game. A couple of lefties, Boyd and Weatherspoon, knocking it down from downtown for Florida Atlantic. The timeout on the floor, there's 33 seconds to go in the half, 27 on the shot clock. And Rawls getting a little bit more help than they would like because of his ability to get to the rim, and as a result, able to deliver the package at the doorstep. And my guy Sharp rings the bell. But at the other end, Boyd just comes down and the splash for cash from beyond the arc. Boyd went off last time against Western Kentucky. Had 16 points, made three threes. He does a lot of things well for this team. He's first and made threes. Tied for second in assists. Number three in steals. You know, because of that paint protection and rim protection, and again, it's not just Sharp, Western does a good job of meeting you at the rim because they're athletic. Because of that, FAU has been relegated to the perimeter, and seven of their last 10 field goals have come from downtown. That's 21 of their 31 points are from beyond the arc. Well, they've got 31 shot attempts, 21 of them from distance. And they make 10 threes a game. They already have hit seven in the first half. But they've been forced to take a ton. Western Kentucky looks like they're going to be content to use most of the shot clock. Six-second difference. They double oh. McKnight. Laureate the spin and the finish. Laureate, good minutes off the bench. All right, 10 seconds to go. Rawls gets stripped. Martin looks at the clock, sees how much time he has. He did it. Gets the basket. Elijah Martin gives FAU a five-point lead at halftime. This team has a switch. And we saw them hit that switch that last 30 seconds. Four points, great momentum going into the locker room. They did it at the defensive end. The strip, the run out, and right before the buzzer, look at that, right, plenty of time. That was at least two tenths of a time of a second on that clock. Uh, that was an electric final few seconds for the Owls and their home fans. FAU a five point lead at halftime. Just about set to start the second half. Right now, you've got a chance to get in on the action and vote for our fan of the game. Just go to Twitter, at Stadium and Capture Vote. Is it fan one? I assume it's all those guys. Okay. They really went, they went the distance. Oh, thought, fan two, thought, 
She's feeling it. She feels good. And fan three. I got three really good candidates. Yeah, so do you want a group or a female or another female? Because half my football games, I felt like they put a super cute kid against a couple of college yeah, kids. The kid's yeah, going to win every time. Or a dog or a yeah. puppy or something. Yeah. Yeah, puppies and little kids are going to win the fan of the game. Man, you can't win. Nice job there. Good choices, gentlemen. Nice job in the truck. All right, here we go. At least 20 minutes more of basketball. Owls looking for their 20th straight win. Rick Stansberry and the Hilltoppers played well in the first half. They played about 39 minutes well, but that that last minute 7-0 run because of sloppy play in the backcourt cost them. That's a deep three for Nick Boyd. He came on strong on Thursday night, all 13 of his points in the second half. That's his second triple. He's got six points. Biggest lead of the game, eight points. Nick Boyd picks up the foul, his first. So the, the, the silky smooth guards, Rawls and McKnight were the guys that turned it over late in the first half. That was very costly. Gave the Owls a lot of momentum going into the locker room. But they're going to need some help. Again, it's been all of those two guys just creating shots for themselves. They, gotta, they, they need some help from their friends. Shot clock winding down. Rawls has got to shoot it. Tough shot. Air ball. Golden with it for the out. It's just hard to make a living with your guards creating shots like that. Nice move. Oh. Nice move. Sharp actually tips it out of there. Bill Topper's all the move. McKnight, three. No. Off the heel. Rebound. Greenlee. Gaffney with it. Cross court pass. Witherspoon was hot in the first half. Golden. And miss that. That's a shot affected. That's not a block shot, but that's a shot affected right Certainly there. Certainly altered that shot. Made Golden put it at a poor angle, and he couldn't get the little kiss off the glass. The presence of number 33, Jamarion Sharp. Right here, great pass. Goes straight up. Sharp is with him, but he also rushed the shot because he sees how quickly Sharp can recover. And again, that's unique for a guy at seven feet, five inches tall to be able to have that kind of reaction. Very versatile. Hilltoppers basketball on the baseline. 91 seconds gone by, second half. Owls with their largest lead. Comes out on McKnight. Good recovery, a great help on the weak side to prevent the dive. And an easy pass for Sharp. Acott to McKnight, the three. No, had to get it off. Shot clock winding down. Gaffney was really good at that defensive end right there. Greenlee, three, no. Golden, the offensive rebound. Then he turns it over. Normally he'd turn around and try oh. to dunk that, but now with Sharp on his back. Four guys that could have stole that ball. <laughs> I hope Brock Purdy does that tomorrow. Acott. Nice. Nice move. Acott gets the bucket. Gets it to a six-point deficit. Witherspoon. Not this time. He's got three made three. Hustle. Look at these guys. Four blue shirts were on that ball. They won it. That's what Coach May told his team. We, we want more. Green lead, no. I'm not an NBA scout, but I'm very curious to see what happens with Jamari Ed Sharp because his presence around the cup is amazing. I'm too lazy to even research what his draft status is, but I know that guy can play in the NBA. He does everything NBA guys need to do. He just needs to put some weight on. He, he affected that shot. Runs right? the floor, rebounds, 
block shots and he's at athletic. a high level. Yeah, and he's way more athletic than I expected. I watched him on tape, I watched him Thursday, but here in person, he moves well. He moves very well. And he's got a really decent basketball IQ. I mean, he understands what they're trying to do. All right, that was the third foul on Glad Golden. He spent most of the day sitting on the bench. There it is. He is the tallest player in Division One this season. Zach Eady certainly will be in the NBA. The seven foot four player from Purdue. Purdue may be the best team in the nation. I mean, we go by polls, but I'm going by eye test. Purdue is awfully good. Acott, another two. Quick trigger. Oh, he got no, fouled. but he got fouled. Man, oh, no, no oh. fall. He got his leg. You got to allow the shooter to land. Ignite hit him in the legs. Acott's feeling it right now. He wants to go to work. Nice move. With the left hand. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's the Emmanuel Acott we remember from Boise. Play for Leon Rice. 6 0 oh run right here for the Hilltop. Yeah, they're back in it. Martin's three, in and out. Martin's been pretty quiet except for that dunk and the two right before the horn at the end of the first half. You are dodging a bullet when Martin, you go under that screen like that, he's gonna pull that trigger. He's 0 for 5 from downtown though. So today might be the day to do that. McKnight from the free throw line. And a jump ball possession, Western Kentucky. We've got a timeout on the floor. This game just keeps getting better. Nice run by the Hilltoppers. It's a two-point lead for the Owls. Welcome back. Owls with a two-point lead, 15-39 to go. Second half, you're wondering why the fans are going crazy. We had a guy, he had to make four shots in under 30 seconds to win a big prize, didn't do it. How about these Owls? 19 consecutive wins. Second longest active streak in America. And these guys look like they're having so much fun playing together. Yeah, they have a nice blend of talent. They've added a couple pieces from last year's team. They got a couple of quad one wins. This whole streak started with a win over Florida, 76-70 floor. And since then, this team has done nothing but win, 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 no matter what. Well, the lead was eight points for Dusty Mays Owls, but a 6-0 run by Western Kentucky makes it a two-point game. Rawls from 16, no. Sharp the rebound, misses the putback, goes and gets it. Another try, no. Fans want him over the back. He's not touching anybody. No. He's longer than everybody. There it is. John L. Davis connects. They've been waiting for Davis to get going. Their leading scorer comes in off the bench. Real quiet first half for Davis with that three. Let's crowd up out of their seats momentarily. The lead five points. Acott, this might be a heat check here. Keep shooting it, young man. You're feeling it. They need someone to carry the load. He's certainly exhibit A. We see what he can do. Davis the three. Hey. Look at Davis. No hesitation on that NBA three. When this team gets rolling, man, they are difficult to stop. Because right now, honestly, Western's not playing bad at all. That's already 10 made threes for the Owls. That's what they average per game. Huh. Acott going to work, the double come. Great defense for Martin. Oh boy, that Rawls is going to shake and bank, man. He's nice. Can't get it to go. Davis the rebound for FAU. Boris saw Sharp and thought I'm going somewhere else. This time he'll shoot it over him, and he gets the foul called on Sharp. Probing the defense, daring to challenge the big fella. Second foul on Sharp.
I thought it was a bold thought to even take this shot. Yeah, he's the catalyst off the bench. He used to be a starter. You know, we asked Dusty May how that whole thing started with all these guys coming off the bench that you used to start. And now, you know, it's kind of, it kind of happened organically. One guy had grades, one guy gets injured. Before you know it, you're trying to work them back into the starting lineup. But then one day you say, hey, you know what? What do you think about coming off the bench? And all of those guys bought into it. 0 oh, for 2 for 4. He's still got no points in the game. Davis is third triple in the last 90 seconds. Not this time. Foul that's underneath. Be, yeah. And if that's on Acott, that's, that's going to be tough. Let's see if it's on Acott or, or Hamilton. Hamilton, okay. He's got three. Second team foul. Davis step back three. After hitting two in a row, he misses a couple of them. Got a foul away from the ball on FAU. Got L. Davis picks up the foul. Three team fouls on the Owls. See, this, the officials have been consistent. They have let them play all afternoon. They really it's been have. Physical. So this has been a really physical game. A lot of guys climbing backs and banging around the rim in particular. They're letting them play, and I love it. McKnight, spin move. Oh, he's got a soft touch. That time it doesn't go. And the usage rate, though, Rawls and McKnight are taking a ton of shots. Nice pass. That's a great look. Rosado gets the easy two. Good fundamentals there. They get so much productivity out of that five position from Rosado and Golden. Western Kentucky gets the timeout. The FAU lead is eight points, matches their largest lead of the afternoon. All right, we're gonna step away before we go to break. Let's take one more look at this beautiful bounce pass. Nothing like a pocket pass to get you going between oh. two defenders. Rosado does the rest. Point lead for the Owls, a little more than 13 minutes to go, second half. Join college basketball insider Jeff Goodman with Doug Gottlieb as they discuss and debate the topics of the day. Weekdays live at 1 p.m. Eastern. It's starting to get to that time of year. Start thinking more and more about the tournament, both conference tournaments and the NCAA tournament. It feels like it's another year where it's going to be pretty wide open. It is, and, and I tell you what, the bracketologists around the country will start to, you'll start to see those guys pop up on different TV shows, certainly after the Super Bowl. But man, this is a great time of year, right? Hilltoppers need a bucket here. The three, in and out. Davis the rebound. Davis, Davis, slow it up. Davis is such a good defender. You forget how good of an offensive player he is, but man, he's just he's good at both ends. Martin's three. Strong with it. He caught the rebound. He's been hot. McKnight in oh. traffic. That's nice. Davion McKnight. Great job of splitting a triple. Right to the left side. I guess they all forgot he was left-handed. Because everybody jumped on that right side of the hoop. Looking for Forrest. He'll shoot the three. And Forrest gets his first points. He now has 284 career threes. He only needs three more for the school record. He's streaky, though. He could get that tonight, even though he hasn't been as the first one. He'll go on a shooting spree on you in a second. 
Haycott pulls up from 17. Boy, that's a kind bounce. Every shot at this end, though, is tough. I mean, they are, they, there's just guys creating shots now. Fortunately for Rick Stansberry and Phil Cunningham over there, they got a couple of guys who create. Greenlee, the penetration. Too strong with it. Here come the Hilltoppers. Akon realizes he doesn't have numbers and wait for some friends oh, to he join him. That. And he loses oh, wow. the handle. All right, 11.05 to go in this one. It has been a back and forth affair. How about Davion McKnight in traffic? See ya. Gets the easy two. And on the other end, it's a pleasant sight for Al's fan. Forrest hits his first three of the game. The Owls lead 49-42. I want to remind you, you can still get in on our fan of the game voting. Just go to Twitter, at Stadium Cash or Vote. Fan one, that group of gentlemen, we'll call them the group of five right there. <laughs> fan two, she's got a little shake to her. And fan three, he's got the colors. She's excited. So get in on that voting. Just go to Twitter, at Stadium. I'm going to let you know a little later. I'm not going to influence the voting, but I will say no shirt, no shoes, no vote. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we know where he stands on this. Well, for Western Kentucky, how do they generate offense? Because they've had to have their guards, Rawls and McKnight, shoot a lot off the dribble. And it's been all about creating shots one-on-one. -on -one. I just don't think you can win this game doing that. You have to try to find something out of your system. And now, Allen has been doing it as well. But Rawls, Acott, McKnight have taken, made 15 of, of 37. And that is not a great percentage. The rest of the team's only taking 10 shots. Thought that was a kick ball, wasn't it? Unless it went out first. Well, I think I think the guy had his foot on first. I thought he was playing soccer. He was yeah, that was a nice ball. kick save. Yeah. And then the usage rate of number two Rawls and twenty McKnight. They have to be dead tired at this point. They both played all twenty-eight minutes of this game. Acott's three, no. Boyd up high for the rebound. Boyd wants to push it. Davis oh, loses yep. the handle. He got hit. Foul on Western Kentucky. Acott picks up the foul. Third team foul. The way this game is going, you'd much rather be Florida Atlantic. Not just because they have the lead, but the shots are just coming easier down here. They got to work, don't get me wrong. But the ball is moving. That's traveling. The ball is moving around, and you have to guard everybody. Right now, at the red offensive end to our left, it's all about the guards dribbling it out and then creating something. And that's just not sustainable, in my opinion. Right, unless somebody gets really hot, it's not sustainable. Yep. Nine turnovers now for the Owls. You see Coach Stansbury trying to find some answers. This is where you wish you had a Luke Frampton. So again, one of the top three-point shooters in the country out for the year. And he had 11 points in the last meeting, which came just 12 days ago at Western Kentucky. That game won by FAU 76-62. FAU hit 11 threes in that win. Based on how they're going tonight, they're going to clip that number. Well, Frampton can spread the floor for you because he's such a good three-point shooter. You have to take a defensive player just to kind of hug him and make sure they stay close. And the other guys can play four on four in space. Rawls is being hounded. He needs some help. Acott comes to get it. Still time on the shot clock. Again, here we go again, trying to dribble on your own. This time it works. Basket and the foul. And they've recognized that Acott has that ability to go one on one as well. He, again, he's the third guy that's been scoring for them. And when they get the switch that they want, Akai just power move to the goal. A floater in traffic, buckets, and a foul. He shot it well, 6 of 12 from the field. He's got 12 points. Make it 13, so he and Jordan Rawls leading the way for Western Kentucky with 13 points each.
2-3 zone once again. Look for them to attack those gaps. There's Nick Boyd, another triple. He leads the team in made threes this season. Yeah, but Rosado is the one that made that happen. He got the ball in the circle, and once you get the ball inside, behind those guards defensively, if we got a guy that can make a play and make a good pass, Rosado certainly that guy. Good job. Rawls the jumper, no. Good hustle there. Dante Allen got the loose ball, put it back up. He's fouled. Davis picks up the foul, his second. That's another way to get high percentage shots. Go clean up that glass. Allen recognizing that the most shots from the right side come off on the left. He got to that spot first. Now he's at the line. We got Cosmo Kramer in the back trying to distract. And it worked. There he is. <laughs> He's here for every home game, making an impact. Can he do it on both free throws? Not that time. He's a distracting kind of guy, though. <laughs> Takes your attention, right? <laughs> Six-point game. Forrest the three, yes! There we go. Michael Forrest, his second three. He needs two more made threes for the all-time school record. And he needs three more points to be fourth all-time in scoring in school history. McKnight in traffic, no, but he'll go to the free throw line. I wonder if that was before the shot, because the bump came out early. Let's see what... I'm going to say that was uh, a shooting foul. It's interesting. It is already 16 fouls. That's one area to keep an eye on. We still got 849 in the game. Western Kentucky, a good free throw shooting team at Must get some kind of promotion, or if they usually in the second throws. half, right? If you miss both, there's something in it for the fans. Yeah, incentivized. That's an offensive yeah. foul on Rosado. Golden pops up. They, you know, Thursday night versus uh, Middle Tennessee. They got a lot of production out of that position. 17 points, 13 rebounds between Golden and Rosado, and neither guy missed a shot that night. Good teams find a way every night. It could be something different tonight. It's definitely the three-point shot for FAU. It was a nice drive and kick. Rawls can't hit the three. They hit 11 threes. Bounce pass, back to Golden. He misses it, sharp the rebound. I'm telling you, Golden, I can't figure he's five times in his life he's played against a guy this size. <laughs> if that. Yeah. But he figured twice this year. And Sharp gets fouled. All right, we've got immediate time out. We'll step away. It's an eight-point lead for the Owls. Sharp shoot free throws when we come back. Eight point lead for the Owls, just under eight minutes to go. The Owls just 7.59 away from 20 straight wins. Tune in next Saturday as Davion McKnight and these WKU Hilltoppers host the UTEP Miners. That's the Miners and the Hilltoppers Saturday at 4 Eastern on Stadium. Welcome to the game. I'll be tuned in like all of you. Checking out the game from Western Kentucky. And will they be feeling good? Coming off a huge upset? Or 
Will it be the Owls coming up with their 20th straight win? We've still got eight minutes to find that out. We'll certainly check out the game next Saturday right here on Stadium. So Sharp to the free throw line. Just 54% on the season. One thing to keep note, this is a shooting foul, but they'll be in the bonus the rest of the way. Oh no, check that, it's the one and one. But he will shoot too, because he made the first. <laughs> you were prognosticating yes. right there. Always dangerous as a play by <laughs> Trying to stay away from it. All right, one for two. West Kentucky still hanging around, down by seven. Happy figure for them. You gotta find a way to just keep it close enough to have a shot at the end. You either got a lockdown defensively, and they've done a decent job, but particularly protecting the paint. That three, no good. Nice rebound there. Maybe on McKnight. He's a good rebounding guard. But then you got to find some easy offense, maybe get some turnovers in transition. Sharp misses the baseline jumper. FAU has made them work for nearly every bucket tonight. Nothing easy. 13 made threes for FAU. They have not gotten many points in the paint at all today. Almost all on the outside. Davis picks up the dribble. Still 10 on the shot clock. Boyd to launch a three. That's off Sharp Skies for the rebound. Less than seven minutes to go. Where will the offense come from for Western Kentucky? Rawls with the left hand, yes! Man, that is a tough move right there on a pretty solid defender, Davis. Hilltoppers on the move, it's Rawls, oh, can't quick minute. Elevate, yeah. Those are the ones I was talking about. You gotta try to get the transition easy bucket. Rawls couldn't convert. Hamilton again. Boris is bumped. It'll just be the fourth team foul on Western Kentucky. He's got four. Hamilton with four. He'll take a seat. And it is just amazing. Western Kentucky picks second in this league because of the transfers that they got. And they are, had a good team coming back with McKnight. Preseason all-conference, sharp preseason all-conference. You add a Mountain West all-conference player in ACOT, and you got something going there. Martin, yes, he's had a quiet afternoon, but he delivers there. And on the other side, FAU had eight guys returning from a team that finished strong last year. Dusty May has never had a losing season here at FAU, which prior to him getting here, you could say the opposite, right? They, they, this wasn't a winning program. Well, to be interesting, Tim, if this thing keeps rolling for FAU, they've only got one senior. There are going to be a lot of people coming for one, their head coach, and yeah. two, for a lot of these players. In the new world we're living, enjoy the moment, because the team might look different next season. Yeah, and that's and that's something, the continuity is really hard to do. Uh, McKnight, another one. Boy, he's got soft touch. You know, him, and as well as Grant McCaslin at North Texas, two really good young coaches. But remember, this team... Both those programs, North Texas and FAU, will be playing in the American Athletic next year. Western Kentucky foul, foul number Allen. Allen picks up the foul. Yeah, and only one, three one-loss teams left in the country. All, of course, ranked Purdue with that 21 record sitting at the top. This might be Matt Painter's year. He's got a lot, and, and, and you say that after he gets rid of Travion Williams and Jaden Ivey who went to the NBA. But actually a little better this year. Witherspoon, Ooh. no, but a foul. And Witherspoon have visions of posterization dancing in his head. How about this? FAU's got 57 points. Witherspoon's the only guy in double figures. How that's, how, that? that's how much they spread out the score. They do. We talked about sharing and caring, and these guys wanting it more. That's a guy that wants it right there. I know what he didn't want was to get his shot sit back at him. 
And these are points that you couldn't necessarily expect from Withers when he's got 13. He averages less than five per game. Again, be nice for Coach May. You got so many different guys who can contribute. Many weapons. They all play. They share the basketball. It could be a different guy each night. But the thing I guess we, we talk about, everybody seems so happy for each other. They're, they're just Genuinely yeah. happy, yes. It's one thing to just talk about it. It's another to see it and watch the guys root for each other. Oh, we hear it a lot. The, the yeah. rhetoric from the coaches, and, and everyone wants that. But it is visceral here in Boca. Acott misses the baseline jumper. Oh, he had him. Five minutes to go. Seven-point game. Martin the drive. Up and under, oh. that's blocked. Rosado thinks, I don't want a piece of that. <laughs> he gets it out of the paint. No reset of the shot clock, just 12. Oh, in and out. Put back, yes. Elijah Martin. Martin now has eight points in the game on four of 13 shooting. And that is 13 offensive rebounds yielded by Western Kentucky. Great job on the glass by FAU at the offensive end. McKnight, the drive, well, that's a tough shot. Oh, how about the putback, Dante Allen. Nice cleanup there. They needed that. Staying close. Martin hesitates, offensive. that's offensive. Easy. With those big shoulders, he can't help it. <laughs> I say when I watch him in warm-ups, I'm like, he's lining up at strong safety. I'm thinking twice about crossing the middle. Uh, especially you and your side. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Jeez. Thanks for rubbing it in. Yeah. Uh, that, that young man was a terrific high school quarterback. Yeah, you can just exhibit A on display there. Those shoulders, you're right. He lowered that thing. His defender went flying, too. And again, Martin's another guy that was a starter. Now he's coming off the bench. But you know, they all play good minutes. Yep. Nobody's even in the 30s in terms of minutes. You know, I think the highest is 25 minutes per game. So again, balance, sharing the wealth, a really good formula. Jumper is good from Allen, and it is a five-point game with 345 and counting to go. Martin. The three, that's way off. Sharp the rebound. And Western Sharp. has had a lot of trouble closing games. It's been disastrous at times, just like they tried to close that half and it, and it fell apart. They have an uphill battle here with 323. But it's well within striking distance. Yep. Possession game. Acott. And oh, they the block. Bumped. That's team foul number 10. They're in the double bonus. So he's going to get two free throws when we come back. All right, we will step aside. We've got a tight battle here in Boca Raton. All right, Sharp is not this time. South Florida, Florida Atlantic leads West Kentucky 61 to 56. You, that means you, get to decide who will be named our player of the game today. Please just go ahead and scan the QR code. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. And you'll be directed to the Flow Code website to cast your vote. Your options, West Kentucky, Emmanuel Acott, 13 points, 6 to 13 from the field, 5 rebounds. You want to go Brandon Weatherspoon? He's got 14 points. He knocked down four triples. Also had five rebounds. Get involved. Get the QR code. You get the vote. We'll tell you in a few minutes who is our player of the game. Weatherspoon has been efficient, too. 18 minutes. He's got all of that done. But Acott has played 31 minutes, and he has had to carry a load. Rawls and Sharp, in particular, both those two guards for Western Kentucky have played all 36 minutes. So. Fatigue will probably be a factor here down the stretch. First free throw is good for Acott. Yeah, he's been a nice third scorer for them here in the second half. He's got 15 points, and it is a one-possession game, a 6-0 run for Western Kentucky. 
timing is everything. The owl streak is on the line. 19 straight wins. Greenlee gets bumped. That's team foul number seven. So Greenlee will go to the line to shoot the one on one. He's a 71% free throw shooter. Greenlee has not been to the line yet today. This is big. Three minutes to go. Just a one possession game. Despite the ugliness, Western has been able to hang on. He oh, missed it. Long Look rebound, McKnight has it. Western Kentucky with a triple can tie the game. How about that? I, I would not have thought they'd be in a position based on the way FAU has been playing. They haven't played a bad game, but they Western has been able to make it ugly. Oh, I don't know about that one, Ari. I'm with you. I, I'm he didn't, he didn't push off. All he did was drive the ball, which you're allowed to do. See if we can see. Okay, he did. He, he did, did push off with he that hand a little bit. I it, it wasn't. It wasn't egregious, but because the defender fell, which is smart of the defender, and, and Davis, you know, savvy, drew the foul because it wasn't enough to knock him down. It wasn't. Nice handle from Boyd. Great the foul pass. for Golden. Nice hands. Woo! Oh, and he got it in. Up what a play! Hard. What a play. Golden sets a great screen, strong dive, great catch, and a strong finish. Winning play. I actually thought the Golden was not going to even attempt the shot there. He didn't have much. Watch, he sets a good screen, rolls, all sorts of resistance, doesn't travel, gets it up with the left hand. That was a very difficult catch because there's two defenders with their hands literally on the ball. Dante Allen has his hands on that thing, but Golden says, I want it more. And that's his first field goal of the game. That's why, again, I just thought he thought, I got sharp right there. <laughs> I'm gonna kick this ball out. Right. So a five point lead for FAU. It's gotta make the fans here at Baldwin Arena a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> Two possession game. Oh, we have our fan of the game. Who was it, fan one, fan two, or fan three? Ah. Number three wins. There we go, fan of the game. <laughs> I wonder if she knows she's the fan of the game. I don't know if she knows yet, but I got a feeling with her phone, someone's gonna tell her pretty quick. <laughs> You're the fan of the game, Amber. <laughs> Oh, look, she just found out. Found this out. is that easy. Oh, my gosh. There you go. Look at that instant communication. It didn't require the use of the phone either. Right, that was right. old school. I like that. All right, what are we looking for here for Western Kentucky? Down five with 2.12 to go. Yeah, no need to panic, but you need baskets. And you need to go to Akon. I feel like he's had, and they tried to in the last possession, he got the offensive foul. But Akon is the guy that seems to have the best advantage and able to shoot over his guy. Because there's nothing that Western's doing in terms of their offense other than isolation. That seems to have been the way they wanted to take this. Whereas at the other end, the ball is moving around. There's a lot of screens, cuts, and things like that. Western has gone with one-on-one -on -one basketball, and it's worked for the most part. They're in this game. No reason to shoot a three yet unless it's wide open, right? No, not with it's a lot of possessors left in this game. Here's the ball screen. McKnight, and that's blocked. And to underscore what I'm saying, only three assists. It's been all guys creating shots for West. Oh, that's a nice drive, and he's fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. I mean, three assists in one game, that is almost unfathomable. <laughs> but here we go, Davion McKnight. And pretty solid defense, but they're going to call. Well, that wasn't the foul wasn't there. Yeah. It was on the they're next gonna, They're going to call Rawls after he got to the rim, exactly. So now Rawls will go to the free throw line. And, you know, we talk about margin of error. Every basket is big. Every free throw is big from this point on. He's two for two from the line this afternoon. Make it three for three. Nice to have veteran guards down the stretch of games like this for both teams. One more for the senior. Reliable. Back, back to a one possession game. Oh, 
The 2-3 zone now. Boyd doesn't walk the three. He's going to drive, and he's going to lose it. Great hands. And that's oh, 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 oh. Oh. And that's possession FAU. I, I don't think that was the right call, but... I'll tell you what, Boyd was frustrated, and normally when you're frustrated, you commit the foul. Because he loses this. He gets bumped a little, but not enough to get a foul. But oh, he loses it. Come on, Neese. And then, yeah. Well, I mean, he's all over the arm. I was surprised that they called jump ball instead of a foul, but, you know, that's... Fortunate again for Dusty Mays group. They have the possession arrow. You need to build a wall of defense here. If you're Western, you don't want to get make this a two possession game again. 20 on the shot clock. Davis. There's one on one and gives the golden a ball shot. Glad golden. Two big buckets down the stretch by Golden. Acott the three, no. Sharp tips it out. Davis Ooh. has got it, he's fouled. So Davis will shoot the one and one with the Owls up by five. Great hustle by Davis and Hamilton with everything on the line. Unfortunately for Western, the loose change was picked up by Davis. And Hamilton has been DQ. That's five on him. It was a quiet afternoon for Hamilton. Just three points. He averages more than 10 points per game. So this will be the last one and one for either team. It's the 19 foul on Western Kentucky. He's a big. If he could make two here, make this a seven-point game. Shoots 87% if you want someone at the line. That's and it. you're an FAU fan, that's the guy. Reliable. Davis, seven points in the game. Two for two. 33 bench points tonight for the team that leads the country in bench points with 38 per game. Ignite the drive, he's fouled. Abby, smart, he wanted to get himself to the line to stop that clock and try to chip away and preserve some possessions. So McKnight to shoot two. Western Kentucky's gotta get both here. Knight's got 15 points in the game. Just six of 18 from the field. Wow. Lucky bounce there, fortunate one. And now here comes the trap. Don't need to foul yet, I don't think. One more good hard trap maybe though, we'll try to get a deflection. Lost it. The handle. Western Kentucky basketball down five. Got to convert here. McKnight in some trouble and loses it. He overpenetrated at the worst time right there. He had Rawls trailing and nobody was within 20 feet of Rawls. But unfortunately for McKnight, he couldn't see it. Watch it. Once he goes left here, the whole defense collapses. And the wheel around was Rawls at the top of the screen. You see him trying to get it to an angle where he could see him, but it was too late. He had already turned it over. Golden to the free throw line to shoot two in the double bonus. He's a 57% free throw shooter. For Western Kentucky, he only goes one for two. Still just a two possession game. This is a big one right here. Put him up seven. And Western. To the credit of Dusty May's group, they've made Western work for every single point. So getting two quick buckets is not easy at this point. With 36 seconds, they may have run out of time, and this streak looks like it should go out to 20. 
Well, Western Kentucky just has not shot the three ball well, and they need threes. They're just two for 12. This is a microcosm of how things have gone for both these teams this year. Western has had troubles closing games. Right, at the end of the first half, they had a lot of issues. There was yep. a big four-point swing at the end of the half. And FAU, it, when it's go time, things seem to fall into place. Marshall's three, no. Weatherspoon the rebound, and that should pretty much do it. Davis will be fouled, he'll go shoot two. Had a chance to push this to a nine-point lead. Someone may see the box score tomorrow, and it's going to be a nine or a ten-point win. And they, okay. This is a really good game, and Western Kentucky battled. They did. They gritted it out, really, but uh, FAU is a really good basketball yeah, team. Ari, seeing them in person, and this was an ugly one. This was not aesthetic at all, but they got it done. And it really was never in doubt, even when FAU, or I'm sorry, Western Kentucky cut it to one possession. You got the sense that FAU was just going to make the plays they needed to down the stretch, and they did. And it, their depth has really showed off because the guys you expected to come in and score a lot, like Davis, Martin, they both had really quiet. Not today, yep, correct. Both in single digits, both and they still only have one player in double figures, yeah. and they've got 70 points. And Weatherspoon is the one candidate we had for a player of the game. He's the only one with double figures. Number 23, he's going to the bench now. Love has got to launch this three in a hurry. And that's what I'm saying. It, it can't get high-quality shots quickly against this set defense. Akon's going to get a trip to the free throw line, but precious seconds ticked away. It's been a frustrating afternoon and a frustrating season for the guys up in Bowling Green, Kentucky. When this game hit our schedule, I would have thought Western Kentucky would have been coming in here with a nice winning streak and trying to survive against FAU. But this FAU team is for real. They are one of the better teams in the nation. And they are proving it night in and night out. And when you think about, we talked about this being a two-team league, perhaps, with North Texas. FAU has already beaten North Texas twice by four points each game. Now, can they get them a third time? We may find out down in Frisco, Texas in March. And the best part, arguably, for FAU is Boca Raton's excited about this program in college basketball. How about that? People wanted to see the Showtime dunk, but Dusty May, class as always, holds him back. Final score, FAU beats Western Kentucky 70 to 63. They now have 20 straight wins. They are tied for the longest active win streak with Charleston. That is impressive stuff. A great win for FAU. It was a gritty performance, a total team effort. But FAU gets the seven-point win. And there is our player of the game, Brandon Weatherspoon, 14 points. He knocked down four triples, also chipped in six rebounds. How about these owls? They're a very good team. They're cohesive at the defensive end. They share the ball at the offensive end. And they have been rolling down here in, Bo in, in Boca Raton, man. I tell you what, I don't see them losing any conference games. They are really good. I like it. We're going to step away, but we're going to come back with Coach May. We're going to talk about this Owls team. We're going to talk about the win streak and talk about their prospects in March. <laughs> 